Are you a first time home buyer, somebody currently out there in the market and wondering which property should I stay away from? Which property should I completely avoid? Well, as someone who has bought a lot of properties personally, helped hundreds of clients buy properties over the years, there are a handful of types of properties that I personally believe that you should stay away from, properties that I would not consider myself. And in today's video, I wanna spend a little bit of time and walk you through these properties so that ultimately you're not one of those home buyers who has regrets after actually closing in on the deal. In fact, one of the last things you want to have happen in your life is buy a property and then have to throw all of this good money after bad problems, things that you didn't know were going to be a problem, and in some cases, things that you can't change at all. So if you are a first time home buyer, somebody out there looking, use this video as a reference point so that ultimately you can save yourself some time when you're out there looking and ultimately save yourself the headache by completely avoiding these types of properties. Now, before we go any further, I'd like to take a minute and ask a favor. If you find any value in my videos at all, do me a favor and hit that thumbs up. And if you wanna support the work and the time I put into these videos, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. So the very first type of property I wanna talk about today are properties that have been flipped. These are properties that were probably distressed. They needed cosmetic work. They needed things to be fixed on them. And somebody purchased them with the idea of fixing those items, bringing it back to the market at a higher value so that they could make money on that difference. Well, here's the biggest problem with flips, is many of these flips are very poorly done. And that's because a lot of these investors have just gotten into the game because they've seen that there's money to be made out there and they have absolutely no business fixing and flipping a property. In many cases, these aren't business people, they're not contractors, they are merely there to make a profit on a property. But what I often see is that these investors overpay for properties and they start cutting corners so that they can ultimately save money on the transaction so that they can end up with a profit at the end of the day. And one thing I like to point out to clients when we're looking through flip properties is that if you can notice with the naked eye problems in the home, for example, if you're in the kitchen and you notice you know, where they stopped the counter short or there's gaps in things or something with the cabinetry doesn't fit correctly, or in some cases maybe it's in the baseboards or they didn't do the closet doors correctly, whatever it is, if you can notice it with the naked eye, then how I often think of it is that if a flipper is cutting corners on the things you can see, think about all the corners they're cutting on things you can't see. And that's because in many cases, these flippers aren't using licensed contractors to do a lot of the work in the property. In fact, oftentimes there's no permits pulled at all on any of these properties, which means you don't really have anyone checking the work to make sure that it was done correctly. And when you're changing things like electrical, things like plumbing, you know, even some high ticket items like roofs and or structural repairs, you need somebody following up to make sure the work was done correctly. And the very last thing you want to be as a home buyer is fixing a property that you thought was nicely upgraded because the contractor that you bought it from didn't do the work that they were supposed to do from the start. But here's what I'll say, not all flip properties are created equal. There are flippers out there, there are investors out there that do really, really good work on properties. But at the same time, there are also a lot of flippers out there that don't do really good work. They don't do quality work. So if you're considering buying a property that has been flipped, just make sure you're doing extra due diligence. Make sure you're checking everything. Ask your real estate agent to check to see if permits were pulled. Ask your agent to see if the investor will provide receipts for things or even provide names of the contractors that they use to do the work inside the property. Because if they can provide names and those people are licensed, then you're probably in good hands. But on the other hand, if nobody's licensed, they haven't done any permits and they've done a complete makeover on a property and you can see things that aren't done correctly, then I would personally shy away from those types of homes. Now with that, the second type of property that I would personally shy away from and try to get clients to shy away from are houses that are located near major streets. You know, they back to a major street, they back to a freeway, they're really, really close to a railroad track. Or in some cases, maybe they've been built on the side of a hill and that property hasn't been structurally reinforced. There's no bedrock underneath it. And the reason those types of properties are issues for me is because you can't pick up a property and move it. Location is everything when it comes to real estate. Things like major streets and freeways and railroads, those are things that push buyers away. I've sold a lot of property in my career and I often get feedback when I have one of these listings from agents on the other side. I ask, hey, what did your client think about the property? And if it backs to a freeway, if it backs to a street, if there's noise involved, Typically, that's something that always comes back in that feedback and it pushes buyers away. At the same time, 
as a buyer who's bought a lot of property, I would never buy a property that backs to a major street or backs to a freeway. And the main reason for that is because of resale value. Even though you don't have plans to resell that home immediately, at some point in the future, you might resell that home. And when you have a property that has location issues like this, that brings the pool of potential buyers way, way down. Think of it like this. If you had a hundred potential buyers that would buy a single family home in a certain neighborhood, once you back it to a street or a freeway or something where there's noise involved, you're going to lose a large majority of those people just because they don't want to deal with the noise situation. So in order to recapture the most buyers when it comes to reselling that home, you want to avoid homes that have potential issues like this. Now, a moment ago, I mentioned homes that are on hillside that aren't structurally reinforced, that don't have bedrock underneath them. If they have been structurally reinforced or they're built on some sort of bedrock where they're not going to shift or move, then it's not really a big deal. But take, for example, some of the homes that were built in Newport Beach. These are five, six, seven, $10 million homes built on the side of a cliff that aren't structurally reinforced, that weren't built on bedrock. And what we had was rain consistently over the last two years that not only caused that hillside to erode, but it caused property to completely fall down the hill. And those homes were completely red tagged. And guess what? In most cases, insurance isn't going to cover that. So you've got to come up with money out of pocket in order to deal with that type of damage. So as a potential buyer, these are things that you just need to consider when you're going through that process to start. Now, the third type of property I want to talk about is one of the most important when we're talking about issues with a home, and that are structural issues. This could be a crack in a foundation. This could be cracks in walls, in ceilings that aren't straight lines. And the reason I say they're not straight lines, because oftentimes you'll see a hairline crack in a wall or a ceiling, and it's just a crack where the drywall meets in the tape, if you will. And those really aren't issues because it just happens over settling. Now, I'm not a home inspector, and if you have one of those issues, you should contact an inspector or somebody to actually look at it. But from experience, I would say those typically aren't issues. But when you have cracks that go all different directions and they're not in a straight line, these are definitely issues with the foundation of a home. And I would never personally personally buy a home that has structural issues just because these homes can be very, very difficult and costly to remediate, to fix the issue on that. On top of that, homes with sagging ceilings, or in some cases, maybe you bought a home and they removed a load bearing wall in that property. Now the ceiling is starting to sag a little bit. Well, in my opinion, this falls under structural issues in homes that you should probably avoid. Now, earlier in the video, I mentioned trying to check with your agent to see if permits had been pulled on properties that were flipped. Well, it also makes sense to see if permits have been pulled on properties that have been remodeled or renovated. Now, me personally, I don't necessarily worry about the permits if it's mostly cosmetic work. That's just me. Now, some people are really anal about it. Some people want everything permitted, everything done by the book. I have less of an issue with that because I'm gonna have a home inspector checking out a lot of that to begin with. So that's not really a problem for me. But if it is a problem for you, then you should absolutely make sure permits have been pulled. But one non-negotiable for me is properties that have had structural work done posts have been removed, walls have been removed, and no permits have been pulled. That has the potential to be a big, big issue. I've walked into properties before where I could tell the ceiling was starting to come in a little bit, and you knew that there was a wall there before because I knew the floor plan, and I've seen that floor plan before, so I knew that there was a post supposed to be in a certain place that had been removed. And guess what? No permits had been pulled, nothing had been filed with the city, and you could already tell it was an issue. So guess what, over time, it's going to be more and more of an issue, especially when you have a second level on a property. We'll remove walls and posts in a home when they have a second floor sitting above them that needs to be held up. And because they want the open floor plan and they don't wanna deal with permits and going through the process of that and all the costs involved, they just say, you know what? I'm gonna remove the post and everything's gonna be okay. Well. It's okay until it's not okay. So if you are a buyer out there and you're looking at properties that have had work completed, just take the extra time to do your due diligence. Don't skip a home inspection. It's okay to waive contingencies on some things, but don't waive all your contingencies. Don't put yourself where your back's against the wall and you've gotta move forward even when there's issues with a property. I just recently talked to a potential client who said his neighbor sold their home a couple years ago and they bought it when the market was hot and they decided to forego go any inspections on the property. And guess what? When they moved in the property, they saw that there were some leaks coming through the ceiling after a big rain. 
Well, they went into the attic of that property and realized that the previous owner had been putting buckets up there to catch water when it rained. And what happened is over time, those buckets had filled up and started to drip over and went into the ceiling of the property, which sounds absolutely crazy because that's something that could have been easily avoided by getting a home inspection or at least by just doing your own inspection and going up in the attic and checking on things. Now I realize inventory is low, buyer demand is still really heavy out there, there's a lot of competition and you wanna win properties, but don't do it at the sake of buying something that needs a lot of work just to move into a home. In addition to that, I would avoid homes that have old galvanized plumbing. Oftentimes can lead to rust in the water. These are pipes you're going to have to replace over time just because of the age of them. And chances are it's going to be sooner than later because back when they used this galvanized plumbing, the time has more or less expired from those pipes being able to last. So you're coming due for having to replace that type of work. Over time, it just erodes and it's something that's gonna to have to be addressed. In addition to that, homes that have electrical issues, old knob and tube wiring, aluminum wiring, you know, any sort of buzzing in the electrical panel, you need your inspector to take the panel off, check the wiring behind that panel, make sure there's no issues. In fact, I wouldn't be buying a home where there's a bunch of costly items that need to be repaired. You know, the electrical panel's one, HVAC is another, you know, the furnace, the condenser. You wanna make sure it's in good shape because these are things that can be expensive to replace and to repair. On top of that, homes that need roofs where the roof is near the end of its life because to replace a roof, depending on the square foot of the home, that can range anywhere between 15, 20, upwards of $50,000 depending on the type of roof that goes on that home. So you really wanna avoid homes that have big issues like this unless you had plans to take care of that anyway. It was already built into your budget and you already know you have to do it, then it's not really a big deal. But if it's something you're thinking, hey, I'm just going to deal with it until it breaks and, and then I'll address it. Well, what if that's a couple of months? Do you have the money to be able to do it? So as an agent, I always recommend to clients to stay away from properties that have issues like this unless it's actually reflecting in the price. Unless you're getting a break in the price, then in some cases it can make sense. But usually that's not the case. And the other types of properties I would stay away from are ones that have water issues. If there's mold in property, mold is very very, very hard to remediate. You know, if there's active water in a property and it's a big, big deal, that's a big, big issue. If it's a small deal under a sink or something like that in a bathroom, probably not a concern. But when you've got mold that has taken over a property and you think, hey, I'm just going to go in, you know, I'm getting the property at a discount, I'm going to remediate it, take care of it. That can be a bigger problem than you think and something I would stay away from. On top of homes that have flat roofs, not a small piece of flat roof on a house, that's usually not an issue, but when the entire roof of the house is flat, that can be a big concern because flat roofs have a shorter lifespan than A-frame roofs and can lead to problems down the road. They're actually known to have problems. So as a potential home buyer, I would stay away from homes like that. In fact, I would stay away from homes that need a lot of work. You shouldn't skip inspections, and that includes home inspections. If the home has a lot of trees around it, you probably want to do a sewer inspection. If the home has any sort of moisture issues, you probably want to have a mold inspection. But at the end of the day, it's really about knowing what you're okay with and what you're not. If you're a contractor that's completely okay with work, and you know the cost to do things, then probably less of a concern than a first time home buyer that just has the money to get into a property. They don't have a lot of extra money and they're not expecting issues. Then you have to be more careful with the property that you buy so that you're not setting yourself up to have to come out of pocket with a lot of money to deal with issues that you had no idea about. Now I'm sure I could name a lot of other types of properties that you should stay away from, but I'd like to ask you, what types of issues have you had in properties? What properties do you stay away from? What issues don't you want to see in property? Please do me a favor and let me know in the comments below. Now, hopefully a video like this doesn't scare you too much. It's not meant to scare you, but rather just make you aware of the types of properties out there that can have issues, things that you should be aware of when buying a property. Now, the last thing I wanna make you aware of is by having a knowledgeable real estate agent that has experience in the business, that's been doing this a while, you can avoid a lot of the things that I mentioned in today's video. If you have an agent, fantastic. If you don't, I put a referral link in the description of this video that can connect you with me or one of my referral partners that does business just like me. So if I can help or connect you, do me a favor and check that link below.